Very good morning, everyone. So today we'll see about the plasmodium. So today uh, we are going to cover the plasmodium parasite into two part. First part that is today we are going to discuss about the introduction, habitat, morphology, and its life cycle. And part two we are going to cover the pathogenesis, diagnosis, and complication. So if you want to study any parasite, we have to cover this all the points in order to understand about the whole about this parasite. Okay, today class will cover about the, this part one. Okay, so we are going to cover about the introduction of the para plasmodium, habitat of the plasmodium, morphology of the plasmodium, and life cycle. So at the end of the class, the viewer will understand about the introduction about the plasmodium, habitat about the malaria, morphology, and its life cycle. Okay, so we'll start about the introduction. So the plasmodium commonly known as the malaria. Okay. The word meaning malaria in Italy, it is a bad air and in the Latin it is the marshy area. It is developed into the marshy area, so the, the name kept as the marshy area. Okay. So the plasmodium means, the word meaning, it is a large protoplasm which containing many nucleus. This is the simple uh, word meaning of the plasmodium. So simple word, it is the amoeba in the blood. Usually amoeba will be present into the intestine. So we will, for in order to understand about this parasite, we will call it as the amoeba in the blood. Okay. So, the parasites are the type of protozoa which lack locomotion organelles. It does not have the locomotion, whether they have pro, uh, CDA and so many uh, lack of the locomotion organelles. And they live intracellular parasites. They live inside the cells. Okay. And there are more than 170 species which infect the, all the animal, but four species are the human specific. So that we are going to cover this four uh, parasite we are going to cover because that is a human specific and it produces the intermittent type of fever, the type of quadrian, tertium and quadrant. So this variety everything will uh, study about the part two uh, of the plasmodium. Okay. So we will see about the kingdom. So it is a protista. We have five kingdom. So the, pro, uh, the all the parasites comes under the protista and sub kingdom the Pro, uh, parasitology is divided into two types, protozoa and metazoa. Metazoa we are calling as the worms and elements. Okay. So this malaria comes under the protozoa. So that is a subkingdom. And pylum is the epicomplexa and order and family is the hemosporidae. Okay. What is meant by epicomplexa? That means the absence of the locomotion organelles. So that is epicomplexa and hemosporidia means the life cycle of this parasite is happening in the blood. So that is known as the hemosporidae. And genus, it is a plasmodium, and this is uh, plasmodium vigax, plasmodium falciparum, plasmodium ovale, and plasmodium malaria. This is the four uh, parasite will infect the human. So we are going to study about this four para, four, uh, four parasite. Out of this, the uh, most common is the plasmodium vigax, and most dangerous is the plasmodium falciparum. Why it is dangerous? We'll study further. Okay. So about the introduction. Uh, the Susruta described, uh, described in this literature about the malaria and its association with the mosquitoes. Okay. So he described about the relations of the malaria and the mosquitoes. Okay. And this is the important one. Ronald Rose, 1902, demonstrate the anaphylaxis mosquito or the vector of the plasmodium species. For this he got the Nobel Prize. Okay. So habitat. So we will study the simple habitat. Okay. So before going to the habitat, we should know about the two words. One is the host and another one is the parasite. What is meant by the host? It is the living organism which provides or give the food to the uh, give the food and shelter to the parasite. It is known as the host. And what is parasite? It is a living organism which grasp or take the food and shelter from the host. Okay. I always used to tell in the class the parents comes under the variety of the host and the children comes under the variety of the parasite because the, the parents will provide and give the food and shelter to the children. So this host comes under the parents and parasite it is like a children. It is a living organism which grasp and take the food and shelter from the host. Okay. So easy to remember host and parasite. So we have to understand about the, uh, there are different varieties are there, will come one by one. Okay. In malaria, okay, we have two hosts. One is a human and another one is a mosquito. 
Okay, so this is the anaphylaxis mosquito is responsible for the malaria and this anaphylaxis mosquito is easy easy to identify. The one identification is it sucks the blood from the human, it sits into the human body. So like this the angle, you can see that angle will be in the top. Okay, so it is a more than 30, uh, 30 degree of the angle, it sits more than 30 degree. Where is other variety? Hulux and other variety sit in the same surface, sit in the surface into the not in this angle, it is into the regular angle. So uh, there is no angle and where there is anaphylaxis is more than 30 angle. So that is that is easy to identify it is anaphylaxis mosquito. This anaphylaxis mosquito only responsible for the malaria, especially it is a female anaphylaxis mosquito. Why it is only the female anaphylaxis mosquito? Because the female anaphylaxis mosquito is helping for the, it's required the protein for the reproduction. So the blood having the more protein, hence that is a female mos anaphylaxis mosquito uh, comes to the human and suck the blood from the human in order to reproductive life. Okay. So post human and mosquito, I told you. So human is the intermediate host and mosquito is the definitive host. So what is meant by definitive host? What is meant by the intermediate host? I already defined in the class, but again I am repeating in order to understand. Definitive host means the it is the sexual cycle, sexual cycle appearing into the which host? So that host is known as the definitive host. And where there is the asexual life cycle is occurring in which type of the host? That host is known as the intermediate host. So very easy to understand. Definitive host means there is a sexual cycle and adult form of the parasite should be present. And intermediate host means asexual cycle and larval stage of the parasite will be present. In case of human, there is an intermediate. Human is an intermediate host and mosquito is the definitive host. Okay. So as I told you, asexual cycle is happening and mosquito there is a sexual cycle is happening. Okay. So asexual cycle otherwise known as a zizogony. So what is meant by zizogony? The word meaning of zizogony is a dividing. Okay. It is dividing. Okay. And he is a sporogony. We will study what is sporogony. And the human, in the human, it lives in the hepatocytes and RBC. It mostly lives into the RBC but affect first the hepatocytes then it goes to the RBC. Where there is a mosquito, it lives in the mid gut, that is a stomach, it lives in the mid gut, okay. So now we will study about the morphology. So there are totally 9 morphology, okay. Human have 4 morphology and mosquito have 5 morphology, okay. Human have prophocyte, zizone, mirocyte and gametocyte, okay. So we are going to study about the detail about this, all the 4 uh, morphological features, one by one. And mosquito, it have microgametes, macrogametes and oak in it and oocyst and sporozyte. So this we are not going to study about much about it but we are going to study about the sporozyte. Why we, we need to study about the sporozyte? sporozyte? Because the sporozyte is an infective form of the human. So this form of morphology only will infect the human produce the malaria. Okay. So another one infective form of mosquito is the gametocyte. It's very important. Comes to the life cycle I will explain. So infective form of human is a sporocyte, infective form of mosquito is the gametocytes. Okay. So now we will study about the one by one. First one we will see about the trophocytes. Okay. For, in order for us to understand the trophocytes, we are calling as the early trophocyte and late trophocyte. The important one, this all the form where it is developing. All the form is developing into the blood and especially into the RBC. Okay. So early trophocyte we will study. So early trophocyte. Okay. Which is the location? So location everything into the RBC. Okay, all the four parasites: Plasmodium vivax, Plasmodium falciparum, Plasmodium ovale, and Plasmodium malaria. All four parasites lives into the RBC. But if uh, Plasmodium vivax and ovale and malaria will present inside the RBC, where there is a Plasmodium falciparum present into the inside as well as into the surface of the RBC or membrane of the RBC. Okay, shape of the ring, it is known as the signet ring. Okay, all the four, it is known as the signet ring. What is signet ring? So, this is known as the signet ring. Okay, it is like a, looks like a ring shape. So, that is we are calling as a signet ring. Okay, size in plasmodium vivax 1 to 1.5 micron and plasmodium ovale and malaria have same thing. But in case of plasmodium falciparum, 2 to 2.5 micron. So, everything. 2.5 okay 
and chromatin dot. Chromatin dot, here it is a 1 in case of plasmodium vivax, overlay and malaria, but in case of axiferum it is a 2. So what is a chromatin dot? It is chromatin dot. This is a chromatin dot. The another name of chromatin dot is a nucleus. Here you can see in the plasmodium vivax, overlay and malaria there is a 1 chromatin dot. Where there is in the plasmodium falciferum it have 2 chromatin dot. 2 or more than 2 chromatin dot will be present. That means more than 2 nucleus will be present. Okay. And number of 3, it is a 1. And in case of plasmodium falciferum 2 and on a overlay and plasmodium uh, malaria, it is a 1. So here you can see the uh, all the thing. It, it is the only one ring will be present, one signet ring. Where there is a falciferum, it have more than one ring. That means it may be 2 or 3. Okay. This is about the falciferum. Okay. So the final one, very important one. Type of RBC is affected. Okay. The plasmodium vivax always affect the young RBC and plasmodium falciferum always affect the all type of RBC, whether it is a young or mature, all the type of RBC will be affected. Where there is a plasmodium overlay affect the young as well as the reticulocytes. Ret reticulocytes means you know it is a previous stage of the formation of the erythrocytes. And plasmodium malaria it affects the old RBC. So this is the very important for the MCQs. Okay. And next one, cytoplasm. Cytoplasm is a asymmetrical and irregular. In case of plasmodium vivax, overlay and malaria, it is it is a asymmetrical and irregular. In case of pla plasmodium falciferum, it is a symmetrical and regular. What is that? Okay. So you can see it here. The cytoplasm here it is a very thin and here it is a very thick cytoplasm. Where here it is a uniform arrangement of the cytoplasm. Hence, this is we are calling as a asymmetrical and irregular. And here we are calling as a symmetrical and irregular. So, this is the thing. Okay. And nucleus, chromatin dot, as we said, one in center and more than two in center and one in center and one in center in case of overlay and malaria. So, we have seen it. Okay. Here it is one and uh, vivax will be, uh, sorry, uh, malaria will be two and overlay and Malaria, it is a 1-1. One, one. So, here we can understand more or less plasmodium vivax and plasmodium ovale and plasmodium malaria, it is more or less similar structure. But in case of morphology, plasmodium falciferum, it is always changed. The ring will be more and nucleus will be more, cytoplasm is regular and everything will be changed. So, okay. now we will study about the late trophocyte. So, late trophocyte, size of the RBC in the late trophocyte in plasmodium vivax, overlay and malaria, it is increased. But in case of plasmodium falciferum, the size of the RBC and ring is a constant, that means it's stable. Okay. Movement, everything will go for the amoeboid movement. Okay. And here it is very important is the degenerative changes. What is degenerative? Progressive deterioration of the loss of function to the cells. Okay. Here, degenerative cell, where it is happening? It is happening into the RBC. So, you know, inside the RBC, there is a hemoglobin. So, hemoglobin having two parts, heme part and globulin part. So, this parasite will take the food, the protein part will take the food and that will be reflect as the degenerative changes. That will be look as the red spot. Okay. So, in the plasmodium vivax, we are calling as a snuffner star and in, in case of plasmodium falciferum, we are calling as a mayoral star and overlay James star and malaria, there is a man star. Okay. How it looks? Okay. Shape, plasmodium overlay, it is overlay and uh, falciferum, it is a round shape and overlay, it is a uh, ribbon shape and malaria, it is a band shape. Okay. I will explain through the diagrammatic representation. You can see there is a plasmodium overlay, it is a ribbon shape and here it is a plasmodium malaria, it is a band shape. Okay. And nucleus will be same. Okay. Now we are coming to the darts. I explained. This is a degenerative changes. Okay. This is the red spots. Okay. This is a red spot. There are numerous red spots which present into, the, present into the inside the RBC. This is the ring, signet ring and this is the cytoplasm and this is the nucleus. That is known as the chromatin dot. And this is a small, small dots. That dot is known as the snuffner's dot and it is a numerous. It is a many darts will be present. But in case of mayoral dart, there will be big, there is a large dart, large red spot will be present and which is having few, few red spot will be present. And in case of James dart, there is a same like a snuffner's dart, okay, size will be, a, size will be moderate between the snuffner's dart and mayoral dart, 
Okay, and here it is a many dots will be present in, in the inside the RBC. Where there is a man stack, it is a very few dots we can see, very thin dots, very minute dots you can see. So this four dots helping for identification of the trophocyte. It will appear in only into the late or mature trophocyte only. Here things to remember about this dot and the here it is the plasmodium ovale, it's producing the ribbon shape and where there is a plasmodium malaria it is producing the band shape okay this is the thing this is the ring shape you can see the rbc inside the rbc there is a ring one okay now we will so, we'll go for the z zone the word meaning of z zone is a dividing so now here it is a cells are dividing okay how okay the parasites are dividing how it is okay so here the same thing uh, appearing location everything will be in the rbc nothing to discuss and shape all the Parasites looks the oval shape or round shape and size of the RBC again and this variety plasmodium vivax, ovale and malaria it is a increased size of the RBC but in case of the falciparum the size of the RBC and ring will be constant okay and cytoplasm will be bluish and nucleus will be as we said in the same like one and more than two will be in case of falciparum okay things to remember is number of the mirocyte what is the mirocyte Okay, so what happened? This ring will convert it into the chromatin and cytoplasm will make type of structure. It is known as the mirocyte. Okay, here things to remember here like this structure. Like this structure. So what happened? The part of the chromatin dot and part of the cytoplasm will divide and will make the one structure. It is known as the mirocyte. Okay, so this mirocyte. This mirocyte, in case of plasmodium vivax, it is present in 16 and in case of calciparum, it is 8 to 32. In case of ovale and malaria, the number of mirocyte will be 8 in each. Okay. Arrangement will be symmetrical arrangement. I, here it is a asymmetrical arrangement. Other two are also, also in the symmetrical arrangement. Okay. Hemosine pigment. What is hemosine pigment? As I told you, inside the RBC, there is a hemoglobin. So, the Heme, the, if you are breaking the hemoglobin, heme part and globulin part. So the globulin part will uh, will take by the parasite as the food. Okay, remaining will be the heme part. That heme part will be stagnant inside the RBC. That heme part it is known as the hemosine pigment. So with a different color, it looks a different color. In case of plasmodium vivax, it looks fine golden brown. And in case of falciparum, it is a dark brown. And in case of ovale, it is a brown black. And in case of malaria, it is a black. Okay. It's a very important one. It is a peripheral circulation. All the three is present. If in falciparum, the peripheral circulation, the zizone form of peripheral circulation, it is absent. The, falci the zizone form of the falciparum is absent in the peripheral circulation. It's very important. Why it is absent? We'll study into the life cycle. Okay. This everything I'll diagrammatic representation I'll explain. Okay. This is the vivax, falciparum, ovale and malaria. Okay. You can see this is the hemosine pigment. Okay. This hemosine pigment, the color also you can see. It is a fine uh, fine golden brown and this is a dark brown and this is also dark brown or black and this is the completely black. Okay. Here the mirocyte will be 16 and here it here it is 8 to 32 and here it is a 8 and here it is a 8. So how the mirocyte arranged? See you can see the mirocyte arranged into the it's a symmetrical arrangement. It looks like a round. Here also it looks like a round. Okay, it is a symmetrical arrangement. Okay. Where there is in the falciparum, it is not symmetrical. That is that is the reason we are calling as a asymmetrical. Arrangement is a not in the regular pattern. Here it is a regular pattern. So that is the reason we are calling as a asymmetrical okay this is the one okay this form is absent in the peripheral circulation okay why we will study into the life cycle okay this is the example you can see there is a mirocyte and central is the pigment hemosine pigment okay now we will go for the mirocyte okay mirocyte the location is the same and shape is again oval or round shape and size is the length is 1.5 to 2 and width is 0.5 Okay, cytoplasm is again bluish and size of the RBC again vivax, ovale and malaria it is increased and in case of falciparum it is a constant. And here things to remember it is very important. The mirocyte have two types. One type is known as the Prady mirocyte that means a small mirocyte and another one is a tracky mirocyte otherwise known as a large mirocyte. Okay, so in case of falciparum 
Vivax, the Brady and Tracky, Vivax, Ovale and Malaria, the Brady and uh, Brady and Tracky both will be present. In case of falciparum and plasmodium malaria, only Tracky is present. Why it is everything? What is the reason? We'll study into the again into the life cycle. This Brady lives into the liver and Tracky lives into the circulations. Okay. Please remember this one. It will explain into the life cycle. Okay. This is the virocyte. This is the cytoplasm, less bluish color, and this is the new chromatin dark, and this is the size, length, and width. Okay. Now we'll go for the gametocytes. So gametocytes, for our understanding, we are dividing into the two. One is the micro gametocytes, and another one is the macro gametocytes. Micro gametocytes we are calling as the male gametocytes, and the macro we are calling as the female, the female gametocytes. Okay, micro gametocytes. So location is the same, nothing too different. Shape, everything here it is only vivax, ovale, and malaria. It is a round shape, but in the falciparum it is a crystal. Like sometimes some book is given banana shape, okay, crystal shape or half moon shape. Okay, size is here also other everything the 3 10 to 12 micron but here it is a 12 to 14 micron here the size of the rbc is increased our gametocytes also uh, size of the gametocytes also increase it is uh, covers the more three fourth of the rbc okay cytoplasm all cytoplasm is a pale blue okay nucleus everything arranging into the center and hemozin pigment same it is present into the hemozin pigment Okay, hemozine pigment diffused around the chromatin duct. Okay, I will explain through the diagrammatic representation. This is the vivax, falciparum, ovale, and malaria. You can see this is the inside, this is the RBC, and inside the RBC, this is the gametocytes. Okay, it is present into the center, and this is the hemozine pigment, it is present into the all over the cytoplasm. And here also, it is present into the center. You can see the shape of the gametocytes, here it is a crescent shape. Okay. other everything is a round shape and everything all the thing gametocytes present into the center and you can see hemozine pigment color of the hemozine pigment you can see here it is a golden brown and it is a dark brown here here, here also dark uh, brown black and this is the black okay this is the things to remember two things the shape of the rbc the shape of the gametocytes in case of falciparum and uh, 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 color of the hemozine pigment okay so now we'll go for the macro gametocytes Macro gametocytes, nothing much to discuss. Location is same, shape also the same, crescentic shape and size is a small and cytoplasm and nucleus. Here is the changes between micro and macro. Okay, all plasmodium vivax, plasmodium ovale and plasmodium malaria. The nucleus will be in the present into the periphery where there is a falciparum remain in the center. Okay, I'll explain through the diagrammatic representations. Okay, here you can see. Okay, the site of, uh, here it is a gametocytes, it is present into the periphery in case of vivax, ovale and malaria. But in case of falciparum, it present into the center. This differentiate the whether it is a mac, uh, whether it is a male or female. Whether it is a male, it is into the center, whether it is a female, that is a macro means it is present into the periphery. But in case of falciparum, both remain into the center and the color the shape of the, this is a crescentic shape. Okay, this is about the gametocytes. Okay, you can see this is the gametocytes. Okay, so this is a beautiful thing, plasmodium vivax. You can see this is the ring shape, you can see, and you can see this is the Z-zone shape. Okay, and this is the, this is the male gametocyte, and this is the female gametocytes. Same, in case of falciparum also, is a ring, you can note, there are more than two ring will be present and this will be the Z-zone stage and this is the crescentic of the male and female gametocytes. Okay. In case of malaria, you can see the ring shape and malaria chain, again we will see into the band shape and this is a band shape and there is a Z-zone and this is the gametocytes. Okay. And overlay again, it is the ring it is present and it is a ribbon shape, this is the ribbon shape okay. and this is, the gamma, this is the Z zone and this is the gametocytes. Okay. So now we are going to study about that, that is all about the four 
human human morphology. Now we are going to study about the sporozoite. I told you why we are studying about the sporozoite because this is an infecting form to the human. Okay, simple thing. Three points: spindle shape developed into the mosquito and infective form of the human, as we I told you. The size of the sporozoite is the four to six micron. Okay, seen in the salivary gland of the mosquito and highly motile in nature. Okay, so this is the shape of the sporozoite. Okay, now we'll study about the very important one. It is the life cycle. Okay, so uh, the infective form of the thing, infective form of human is the sporozoite. Infect, infective form of mosquito it is the gametocytes. Okay, source of infection is the mosquito bite, and host is the definitive host. It is a female anopheles mosquito. Okay, what 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 is meant by definitive host? I told you. Again, I'm repeating. Definitive host means the definitive host is a female anopheles and uh, Intermediate host is the human. Definitive host means where there is a sexual life cycle is occurring. That it is known as a definitive host. Where there is a asexual life cycle is occurring, it is known as a intermediate host. Okay. Habitat first will affect the hepatocytes, then goes to the RBC. It lives into the RBC, then it goes to the internal organs. And there are two type of life cycle: human life cycle and mosquito life cycle. Now we will study about the human life cycle. Okay. Human life cycle and mosquito life cycle. in the human life cycle for our better understanding we divided into the four stages okay pre erythrocytic cycle erythrocytic cycle and exo uh, exo erythrocytic cycle and gametogony okay so this pre erythrocytic cycle it is very important pre erythrocytic cycle and exo erythrocytic cycle both the parasite lives into the liver and ex uh, erythrocytic cycle as the word it is tells it is lives into the it happening into the rbc whereas hematogony it's appearing into the blood okay we'll study in detail okay so simple understanding pre the first starting is the pre erythrocytic cycle this pre erythrocytic cycle where it is happening it is happening into the liver the word it is it's a liver okay afterwards erythrocytic cycle then hematogony this is the process of the thing and sometimes the pre erythrocytic cycle Okay, the uh, parasite live into the liver itself for more than year. Then it goes to the erythrocytic cycle, and this is the gametogony. Okay, what is the difference? What is the why we are studying? Uh, studying here it is the where this appearing into the primary cycle, uh, primary uh, malaria, and here it is the relapse malaria. Okay, human cycle. Okay. human cycle is a first one it is a pre erythrocytic cycle the first one it is a mosquito bite okay so first one the sporozoite which is a infective form of human which enter to the circulation as soon as within 20 to 30 minutes the within half an hour it reaches to the hepatic parenchyma then it reaches to the hepatocytes within 2 to 3 hours it reaches to the each hepatocytes so there the hepatocytes converted into the trophozoite that is a ring form that known as the cryptozoite okay so this cryptozoite okay having two type bradyi and tracheid okay so that comes to the circulation and that cryptozoite mature into are converted into zizone so the zizone again converted into the merozoite as we said due to the morphology merozoite okay this merozoite so full of this hepatocytes the hepatocyte is full of merozoite now the hepatocytes inside the hepatocytes is full of merozoites okay so as we as we said it is hepatocytes the hepatocytes the ring cryptozoite formation after the cryptozoite zizone formation then merozoite then hepatocytes filled with the merozoite then the rupture of hepatocytes then what happen merozoite affect to the new rbc once it is rupture of the hepatocytes from the liver it goes to the circulation so all the rbc will get affected so this stage is known as the pre erythrocytic stage okay so here things to remember two thing duration of the cycle you can see pal palciparum it is the 3 to 5 days only but in case of other thing you can see the malaria it is 30 to 15 days in case of palciparum 6 to 8 days okay this is that is the reason palciparum is dangerous there are so many reason palciparum one of the reason okay number of the merozoite here it is producing 10000 to 20000 here it is a 15000 each but in case of palciparum it is producing 30000 merozoite okay and erythrocytic cycle okay what happened the next merozoite once entered to the rbc then this merozoite converted into the trophozoite then again goes to the zizone then it is a merozoite again it is rupture of the each rbc suppose rupture of the rbc then this merozoite affect to the more rbc the, then it 
life cycle it is continuous so each life cycle this stage is very very important because this is this erythrocytic cycle only responsible for the intermittent type of fever when it comes to the path 2 i will explain so things to remember this cycle is very important for the fever appearing so each erythrocytic each rbc is rupture when the each rbc is rupture the myocyte will come out will produce the fever okay now again things to remember duration is again falciparum it is only 36 hours and type of rbc as we studied it affects the all the rbc okay and here it is you can see the life cycle okay and exoerythrocytic cycle okay things to remember it is it occur into the liver and absent in the falciparum um, uh, plasmodium falciparum and plasmodium malariae okay during preerythrocytic cycle myocytes are not released to the circulation while rupturing of the hepatocytes and reinfect to the hepatic parenchyma. What happened in free erythrocytic? When the rupture of the hepatocyte, the hepatocyte, the myocyte will come out and reaches to the circulation. It affects the RBC. But what happened? This myocyte will not go to the RBC. But what happened? It will affect the further reinfect to the hepatic hepatocytes. So that lives into the more than a year. So these hepatocyte myocytes are converted into the hypnocytes. What is the word mean? Hypnocytes means a sleep animal. So what happened? In case of plasmodium vivax, this hypnocytes lives into 2 to 5 years. And in case of ovalate, it lives to 10 to 40 years. In case of falciparum, it is a absent. And malaria, it is a rare. So things to remember here, the relapsing type of malaria occurring into the plasmodium vivax and plasmodium ovale because it goes to the hypnocytic states where there is a relapsing type of intermittent or malaria does not occur in the case of plasmodium falciparum because the cycle is absent in case of falciparum okay. then gametogony so myocyte enter into the gametogony okay. instead of formation of the trophocyte it go to the sex, uh, gamet gametogony so that mature into the gametocytes so it changes into the microgametes and macrogametes Okay, both will appear into the circulation. So that will affect the mosquito. While mosquito comes to the sucking the blood, while sucking the blood, this might this both gametocytes reaches to the mosquito. As we told, infective form of mosquito is the gametocytes. So here end of the human cycle, the mosquito cycle will start. Okay, what is a mosquito cycle? So mosquito cycle, as we said, infective form of mosquito is the gametocyte. Okay, so here what happened? In the mosquito, where it is happening, everything happening in the midgut, as we studied already. So one microgamma gametocytes converted into four to eight microgametes. Things to remember: it is a gametocytes. Here it is a gametes. Okay, one microgametocytes converted into four to eight microgametes. Where it is happening in the midgut of the mosquito. And one macrogametocytes converted into the one microgametocytes. So gamma gamma gametes. Where it is happening? It's happening into the midgut. Okay, it's very easy. So what happened? Mosquito cycle, gametes. Okay, so that gametes, female and male, fertilized in the midgut. So formation of the zygote, that formation of the okinate, happening into the body cavity. Then in formation of the oocyst. Then formation of the sporozyte. Okay, where this sporozyte, okay, lives into the salivary gland. Okay, this porocyte, when mosquito bites to the human, then human cycle will appear. So this is the simple. So everything is rotation. Mosquito cycle leads to the human cycle. Human cycle leads to the mosquito cycle. So that's about the life cycle of the malaria. That's the end of the part one. We'll study until the part two. Thank you.